Greetings, dear brethren. I trust you are doing well by the grace of God. Welcome to the tribe. Um, today, I want to share on a subject I entitled, Why Did God Take Away Ananias and Sapphira? Why did God take them away? To, you know, look at the story or look at the account, uh, let's look at the book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 1 to 6. There it is written, But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession, and he kept back part of the proceed, his wife also being aware of it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. Then Ananias, hearing this word, fell down and breathed his last. So great fear came upon all those who heard these things. And the young man arose and wrapped him up, carried him out, and buried him. <clears throat> so the foundation of the church was upon sharing among all, so that none among them would lack. So none was keeping things from them for themselves. Note that when he brought part of the proceed to the sale of the sales, Peter did not have to ask him whether the number is accurate or the amount is accurate or not. Peter discerned that the amount was not complete. From Peter's speech, it is also clear that he was not coerced or forced into selling. But the protocol was simple. If you are to give to God, if you sell, it is that you dissociate yourself from the property by bringing the whole proceed to be divided among all. Not part of it. Holding on to part of it means that you have not separated yourself from it. Now, let's look at Acts chapter 4, verse 34 to 35. There it is written, Nor was there anyone among them who lacked, who all who were, for all who were, who were possessor of land, or houses sold them and brought the proceed of the things that were sold and laid them at the apostles' feet and they distributed to each as anyone had need. This is what I was saying. Second um, witness of what I was saying. Acts chapter 2, verse 44 to 45. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possession and good and divide them among all as anyone had need. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> two key elements are important here in, in, in what happened. You have disobedience and stealing from God. So this is um, something that is called in the scripture the accursed thing. Appropriating that which has been dedicated to God. That which is dedicated to God is called the accursed things in scriptures. In order to understand this better, uh, let's see similar patterns in the Old Testament. So the Bible is very clear. God is the same. There is no shadow of variableness in him. So let's look at previous instances where this type of event happened and how God dealed, uh, dealt with these people. Um, the first person we will look at is Saul, Saul, the first king of Israel. The instruction to Saul can be seen in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 3. Now, go and attack Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have, and do not spare them, but kill both man and woman, infant and nursing child, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. The instruction was to destroy all, everything, not part of it. Now, it, let's read in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 9. There it is written, But Saul and the people spared Agag, the best of the sheep, the oxen, the, 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 the fatlings, the lambs, and all that was good, 
and were unwilling to utterly destroy them. But everything despised and worthless, they utterly destroyed. So Saul and the people kept part of the things that God ordained to be destroyed because these things were valuable to them. Now, what? how did Samuel respond to this? Samuel responded to this in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. For rebellion is the sin, is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected you from being king. So we understand God rejected the king, which means he's dead to God. Second thing I want to draw our attention to that uh, another pers- personality or another person in the Old Testament uh, with similar pattern, Achan. The contest is Jericho. Let's read Joshua chapter 6, verse 18. And you, by all means, abstain from the accursed things. This is what I was mentioning. The dedicated thing to God. These are the accursed things. Lest you become accursed when you take off the accursed things and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. Joshua chapter 7, verse 1, second scripture we'll look at. But the children of Israel committed a trespass regarding the accursed things. For Achan, the son of Carmi, and the son of Zabdi, and the son of Zerah, of tribe of Judah, took the accursed things, so the anger of the Lord burned against the children of Israel. <clears throat> Let's look, follow up. Joshua chapter 7, verse 10 to 12. So the Lord said to Joshua, Get up. Why do you lie this on your face? Israel has sinned and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken some of the accursed things and have both stolen and deceived. And they have also put it among their old stuff. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before the enemies, because they have become doomed to destruction. Neither will I be with you anymore unless you destroy the accursed from among you. So, does that ring a bell right now? That is very similar to what we have seen in, in the book of the Acts of the Apostle. That which was supposed to be dedicated to God, they have made it their own thing. So, by this act, they become one with the thing that was supposed to be destroyed. And these have to be destroyed. Doomed to destruction, as we just read it in the scriptures, in in Joshua, um, chapter chapter uh, chapter six, verse eighteen, Joshua chapter seven, verse one, and Joshua chapter seven, verse ten to twelve. So the only way Israel could advance, could win, is to destroy the accursed thing. So the person that was be, that has become one with the accursed thing has to be taken away. Then in Joshua chapter 7, verse 15, we see this. Then it shall be that he who is taken with the accursed thing shall be burned with fire. He and all that he has because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord and because he has done a disgraceful thing in Israel. So again, to bring the whole thing into the context of our reading in the book of Acts, Ananias and Sapphira, um, by holding on to part of the proceed of the sales, they are taking for themselves that which was supposed to be dedicated unto God. And God has to take them out or there will be a hindrance to the move of God. The church was at a place of a serious contention when they were told not to preach in the name of the Lord. So the mystery of the church or the body of Christ is that if one is affected, the whole body is affected. So it's just like the first church, Israel, right? In the context of this study, the intervention of God can be likened unto an amputation of the infected part of the body in order for the whole body to be healthy and function properly. 
If not, the whole body will be in pain. The whole body will be hindered. So they have rejected the word of God through disobedience and were rejected by God. So I want also to emphasize that many times preachers have gone ahead to say that tithes, for instance, are not a requirement of the New Testament, etc. But we see that people should tread very carefully when it comes to things that were uh, 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 that are dedicated, are supposed to be dedicated to God. Abraham was paying tithe before the law. And the simple fact that it is about this 10% that there is a whole lot of contention reveal where our heart is when it comes to our finances. If anything, um, as we read through the story of Ananias Sapphira, God wants our all, our all, all we have belong to him. So we are steward. The Bible talks about stewardship. We are steward. We don't own anything. It's, it's, it's God that gives to us for us to look after. So giving 10% or giving part of it should not be a problem. If you acknowledge, if you really understand that. So the all is what God requires, uh, uh, in, even in the New Testament. So if the all is required and you cannot give part of it, uh, how can you give all? How can you be realistically saying that you are giving all? Well, I will stop here today. I hope this have blessed you and uh, challenge you in, in your work with God. Remember, remember to like, to subscribe, to share and to comment and share your thought about what God has spoken to you about in these scriptures. So remain blessed and see you soon on the Bavarian tribe.